Well, let's lift our hands to the Most High God and begin to bless His holy name. Let us begin to worship the King of kings, the Lord of laws, the Ancient of days. Let's give Him glory, give Him honor, give Him adoration, bless Him for what He had already done. Thank Him for what He will yet do. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. Praise him again. Let him hear your voice. Let him know you are here praising him, worshiping him, adoring him. Because there's no one like him. Praise him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Alpha, Omega. Alpha, Omega. You are worthy of our praises. Today, you are worthy of our praises today. Alpha, Alpha, Omega, Alpha, Omega, you are kings and lord of lords the ancient of days the father of all fathers we just want to say thank you thank you for january thank you for february thank you for march thank you for april thank you for may Thank you for June. Thank you for July. Thank you for August. Thank you for September. Father, thank you for October. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you for your youth. Thank you for the young adults. Thank you for the fathers. Thank you for the mothers. Thank you for the little children. Thank you for the pregnancies. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. My Father and my God, today, like you have never done before, enlarge our joy. the kind of miracles we have never received before, released to us today. You have done great things in the past, but tonight, Father, enlarge our testimonies. At the end of it all, let your name be glorified. And please, Lord, Bless our nation, Nigeria. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Well, 
Now let me borrow something from my children. So tell your neighbor, give me space. Because I'm about to be enlarged. Uh, tell one or two people like that, give me space. I'm about to be enlarged. And then you can shout hallelujah. Well, you can be seated except those who are born in the month of uh, October. If you were born in October, let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> my Father and my God, I'm committing your children born in the month of October into your hands. October is the 10th month of the year. And 10 is 5 multiplied by 2. And 5 is the number of grace. Concerning this, your children, my Father and my God, let them enjoy double grace. Double promotion. Double anointing. Double testimonies. And a double desire to be enlarged. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Please be seated. Uh, the November Holy Ghost service is going to be an extraordinary one. Because the, the theme is the walls must come down. When God gave me that theme for November, I didn't fully understand until he gave me the theme for the Congress. The theme for the Congress is divine repositioning. The Almighty God wants to reposition some people. And in November, he wants to clear the way. Every wall, no matter the nature that is in your life, will fall next month. So get ready. Next month will be great. And of course, the Congress will be like you have never seen it before. Ah, uh, as usual, my children have surprised me again tonight. They've done excellently well. Let's give the Lord a big round of applause for them. They're getting better each time. So there are not too many corrections tonight. Uh, but let me quickly go through them zone by zone. Um, I will encourage you to get the tapes of this evening because there were so many things that they passed through to us that I won't have the time to repeat. Zone one. The choir was good. They started by eulogizing God, by calling God his different names. Uh, there's no king that you, you, you eulogize like that who will not stand up on his feet and give you a blessing. So I'm sure those children brought down the blessings of the Lord. However, you know I'm your coach. I will always have something to say. <laughs> Until you become 100% perfect, 
I won't stop saying, however. Next time they should add a song at the end of the eulogy. Because um, that's the pattern. After you have told him he's the king of kings, the lord of laws, the ancient of days, etc., etc., he would love to hear you sing a little song. Apart from that, that choir was fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. And then the preacher came, and it was very quiet, teaching, line upon line, precept upon precept, very beautiful presentation. That was very good, very good. Well done. And then you allow me to jump to zone four. Zone four, the choir was wonderful. The choir was refreshing. When they started, um, they started with a beautiful song and we, we were already blessed. And then, of course, they came with their song. You add the two together, it was just beautiful, beautiful. And then the preacher came again as a teacher. And she taught very well, beautiful. I mean, you, you, after listening to her, you have something to take home, something to remember by her ministration. That was good. Let's, let's give the Lord a big round of applause. Then we go to zone two. <laughs> the choir was very good. The only correction for the choir is that there were too many leaders. Um, at most, two leaders, considering the limitation of time. If you choose, if you have one lady start and then a brother finish or vice versa, but uh, I counted five leaders leading the singing aspect. They all sang very well. But by the time we finish, we don't even know exactly where we started. Um, you know, difference in pitches or whatever they call it, the, my, the musician. So the, 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 the combination was very good. But at the end of the day, take note, next time, not more than two leaders. And then the preacher. Wow. <laughs> uh, that was powerful. <laughs> it's just like he said, uh, great things come in small parcels. He said, uh, you may look at me and think I am small, but... Uh, <laughs> The one who is inside me does not make me smooth. Very, very wonderful preaching. He was, he was a preacher. He did a very good job. We, we thank God for that. And then zone three. The choir, just wonderful. The 
nothing to complain about at all. And then the preacher. Uh, that's what we will call dynamic. It was, was like, uh, it was electric. Um, to tell you the truth, I, I don't know which one to say did the best. Is it zone two or zone three? They were terrific. And I just thank God for their lives. So you put them together. I think God arranged it like that this time around. A teacher on the left, a teacher on the right, and then two dynamos in between. Uh, it was <laughs> Let, let's give the Lord a big round of applause. Now, I have good news for you. Because uh, the fellow who represented the pastor's seed um, practically brought down the Holy Spirit. Uh, I think there were very few dry eyes here when I time may finish. Uh, good news for you, number one, I'm not going anywhere yet. No, not yet, not yet, not yet. Number two, you don't have anything to worry about. Because where I stop, that's where you begin. And you are all going to be greater than I. Now, I, I know, honestly speaking, one who asked the question, huh, the way things are going, what's going to happen when you go? <laughs> they were asking those questions when my father in the Lord was alive. Every time we had the convention and everything went well, people would say, hmm, now, what's going to happen when this old man goes? And my father and the Lord would say, you haven't seen anything yet. Wait till you see what God will do. So I want to say, like my father and the Lord used to say, you haven't seen anything yet. How many of you believe you are going to be greater than I? Let me hear you shout a big hallelujah. All right. I wasn't planning to sit tonight, but uh, if they bring the chair, why don't you sit? <laughs> John chapter 10, verse 10. John chapter 10, verse 10. My daughter who spoke last said, after listening to all these people who have come before me, what is there left for me to say? And then she still went on and said something anyway. After this, my children have done so well. What is there left for me to say? So pray for me. <laughs> John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. The Lord says, there is life. And then there is abundant life. And then there is more abundant life. 
That means there is room for expansion. There is room for enlargement. In First Kings chapter 17, from verse 8 to 16, First Kings 17, from verse 8 to 16, there is life in the form of surviving. The widow of Zarephath, her son, and Elijah, they were together in the same house, surviving. I don't know if you pay attention to the scriptures very well. They were eating the same morning, evening, for years, bread and oil. Just surviving. But then there is abundant life. In Second Kings chapter 4, from verse 8 to 17, Kings 4, 8 to 17, the Bible talks about the Shunammite woman. Oh, that woman <laughs> was great, rich, influential. She was living abundant life. But then there is something called life more abundant. If you look at First King chapter four, from verse twenty-two to twenty-three, First King chapter four, twenty-two to twenty-three, you will see the provision, the food that is eaten in Solomon's house every day. It's incredible. Incredible. The number of oxen, the number of bushels of five flour, the number of bushels of meal. I mean, in this man's house, the, the, the slaughter tank fatted cows in one day. And then they bring in 20 cows that were fed on, I mean, on the field outside. And to, they add to that a hundred sheep. And then they add to that bush meat, like deer, uh, antelope, rubber, and then uncountable number of fowls. Now that is life more abundant. In the name of the one who owns the heaven and the earth, according to one of my sons, if you are merely surviving up to this moment, get ready for life more abundant. I will try and be quick because, you know, my children, as usual, have taken some time. There are certain things that must be enlarged in your life today. Number one, your vision must be enlarged. Oh, one of my sons did an extremely beautiful work on that. Talking about vision. Because you see, in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, Proverbs 29, verse 18, the Bible says, where there's no vision, the people perish. And um, that my son said, <laughs> you can't talk of enlargement until you can see it. He so said, without your seeing something, you can't even have it. 
And he's right. Because in Genesis chapter 13, from verse 14 to 15, Genesis 13, 14 to 15, the Almighty God told Abraham, whatever you have seen, I give it to you. When you read Genesis chapter 30, from verse 27 to 48, Genesis 30, 27 to 48, when uh, our friend Jacob wanted to practically take over the flock of Laban, you know what he did? He reached an agreement. Any animal that has stripes and spots, that'd be mine. The one that is solid color, that'd be yours. So he did something. Got some poplar trees, made marks on them, and made sure that when the animals are pregnant, uh, those that are healthy and strong, he made sure they got pregnant, looking at those poplar trees. When they come to drink, they keep on looking. And when they start uh, delivering, they deliver children that look like uh, what the mama had been looking at. What you see, you can become. Oh, well, the Bible made it abundantly clear. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Second Corinthians 3, verse 18. It said, when you were looking at the Lord as if he's in a glass, and as you are looking at the Lord, you change, you are transformed from glory to glory, just as the image of the one you are looking at. What you see, you can have. When I became general overseer, the convention before I became general overseer, our attendance was less than 700. And it was, it was a big convention. But then I... <laughs> I wonder, ah, this is not good enough. And then I had an opportunity of visiting Kenneth Hagin Camp meeting. And I saw about 17,000 people from all over the world in one place. Ah. On my journey home, I told God, I don't want hundreds anymore. I want thousands. And the church began to grow. And then I heard of Yong Gi Cho in South Korea. And I went there because they told me he has the largest church in the world. I went there and I saw a church. Ooh, a building large enough to take 50,000 people. And they were holding seven services on Sunday. Ah. <laughs> and the pastor was begging people that those who have come to church this Sunday must not come next Sunday. So that those who could not enter now can enter. And I came back, I said, God, I don't want thousands. I want millions. What you see, you can have. Today, in the name that's above every other name, God will enlarge your vision. I'm going to be hurrying a little bit because of time. Another thing that must be enlarged in your life today is your coast. You know, like I said, my children have said almost everything. Maybe I'm repeating some of them. And they have quoted Isaiah 54 from verse 2 to 3. Isaiah 54, 2 to 3. Enlarge your tent. Spare not. Just make sure you are ready to take what is coming. 
You know, in Genesis chapter 13, if we read from verse 14 to 17, Genesis 13, 14 to 17, God told Abraham, he said, walk up and down the land so you'll be able to see more than you are seeing standing on one space or on one spot. As much as you can see, I give it to you. I want to prophesy to some. Before this time next year, what you are calling big now, you will call it small. Enlarge your coast. When we got our campground in America, and they told me God had given us a campground, I think about uh, 112 acres of land, and my children took me there to go and see. I was glad. Hey, coming from Nigeria, now having a camp in America, 114 acres. I told my children when they said it's time to go home, I said, go. Leave me here. Come back for me tomorrow. Just leave me in one bus. They left. That night, I came out when, when it was totally dark. Came out, it was a little bit of moonlight. I began to pray. God, thank you. God, I, I, I appreciate you, etc., etc. And it, it was in the cold season. After some time, the cold was overwhelming, so I went back into the into the van. But my spirit was still racing. So after I got warm a little, I came out. And suddenly I heard God say, take a walk. Walk up and down. The more you see, the more I will give you. <laughs> that night, I walked. Today, by the grace of God, what was 140 acres is now more than 800 acres. Because I walked. As I was walking, walking beyond our land, I saw a house next to our campground. Big house. And God said, look at that house. It's yours. Ah. Follow me when my children came. I told them about the house. They said, sir, please keep your mouth shut. This is America. You say anything like that, the owner will come with a gun and just shoot you. Two years later, the owner of the house says he wants to sell. My children went to negotiate. When they agreed on the price, they told him, do you know that two years ago, God told our father that this house is his own? He said, why didn't you tell me? He said, for two years, my wife and I have been racking our brain. Should we sell or should we not sell? Tonight, God will enlarge your vision. And whatever he shows you, you will have it in Jesus' name. <laughs> Number three, that must be enlarged in your life tonight, is your capacity to be blessed. God wants to bless you. 
The problem is that many of us don't even have the capacity to receive the blessing. Blessing is coming your way. And it's coming in a mighty way. The problem is, do you have the capacity to receive? You see, in 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 1 to 7, 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 1 to 7, when God told that woman, that widow of a son of prophet, to go and borrow vessels so that he can pour oil into the vessels so he can, she can be able to pay her debt, when there were no more vessels, they all stopped. <laughs> Take my word for it. A blessing is coming your way you cannot dream about yet. But you need to enlarge your capacity to receive. And I'll tell you a story. I'm, I'm being quick. But I must remind you. You remember a time I told you that I was in Britain and I ran out of money and I prayed to God, God, please give me 50 pounds. How many of you remember the story? All right, if you don't know the story well, I asked him to give me 50 pounds. Very soon, he provided the 50 pounds. True, wrong number, telephone call. I took the 50 pounds, I was going upstairs to sleep, and I was saying to God, if I had known that you would provide 50 pounds so quickly, I would have asked for 100 pounds. Few minutes later, he produced another 50 pounds. <laughs> I said, God, if I had known that the second 50 pounds would come so quickly, uh, maybe I would ask for a third. And in less than one hour, he had provided 50 pounds, 50 pounds, 50 pounds, three times. Then I became afraid. Oh, I pray for you today. You will not be afraid of blessings. <laughs> Remember the story. So I, 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 I said to God, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just joking. No. The original 50 pounds would have been good enough. So I didn't ask any further. Years later, God told me, son, instead of asking for 50 pounds, if you had asked for 50,000 pounds, I would have given you. Ah. Tonight, the capacity to be blessed in your life will be enlarged. Hmm. Another thing that must be enlarged in your life is your sphere of influence. I've spoken to my children yesterday about enlarging your influence. So in case you were not there when I spoke to them, maybe you get the tape. But when you take the story of Elisha in First King chapter 19, ah, thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell someone from tonight onward, the way of your life will become an express way. to say amen to this before I tell you. 
Because the Lord is saying there's someone here tonight to say, I know your love for me. And he asked me to tell you, you will never know a better yesterday. If you read First Kings chapter 19 from verse 19 to 21, you will find that Elisha was a man of influence. He was a rich farmer. He had at least 11 laborers working for him. Quite influential. But then he became the son of a prophet. And then his influence increased. By the time you read 2 Kings chapter 2, from verse 9 to 15, 2 Kings chapter 2, from verse 9 to 15, the one who was just one of the sons of the prophets became the prophet. And other sons of prophets began to bow down before him. I decree in the name of the one who sent me, your peers will come to bow down before you. But his influence increased to such an extent that he became the controller of the future of his nation. Second Kings chapter 13. Second Kings chapter 13. You read it from verse 14. You can go all the way to 21 so that you just put all together. Second Kings 13, 14 to 21. He became someone who was telling a king, do this and this will be the result for your nation. Do this and this will be the result. The king didn't do what he asked him to do correctly. He rebuked him. He died, but his influence outlived him. His dead bones were still resting the dead. You see, that kind of influence that death cannot quench, receive it tonight in Jesus' name. One of my sons was talking about the new generation. Um, maybe God used them to heal malaria fever, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and they want to forget uh, their fathers. They want to run out and, and, and start a, a ministry. There's nothing wrong in starting a ministry, but you need a cover. When, when I see people coming to me and say, well, God has used us to do this and to do that, I always ask them, and there's room for expansion. Have you been able to stop the sun from setting? Have you been able to tell the moon to stand still? And the sun, and the, I mean, the, the sun stands still, the moon obeyed you. There's, there's still room ahead for enlargement, for improvement. And all of you who are already anointed in the name that's above every other name, may God enlarge your anointing. Hmm. Another thing that must be enlarged in your life is your capacity to make progress. There is progress made when you are walking. Genesis 17 verse 1. <laughs> Thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell someone I think this is coming straight from the preaching of one of my sons. He says, stay connected to me. 
And you can only grow bigger and you will never grow less. Genesis 17 verse 1, the Almighty God said to Abraham, walk thou before me and be thou perfect. Just walking, progress when you walk. Then there is running. Running is faster than walking. I mean, 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 46, 1 Kings 18 verse 46, Elijah ran and beat the chariot of Ahab. So there's running and there is running. <laughs> there is a man who ran a marathon race of a, probably more than 10 kilometers, and he beat horses in running because, of course, the hand of God was on him. And then there's something even faster than running. That's flying. And Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, Isaiah 40, 31 says, If you wait upon the Lord, He will renew your strength. And you begin to fly like an eagle. And I've told you before, there's something even greater than flying. You can travel by air. You just sit down in an aeroplane and uh, you enjoy yourself and you arrive cool, no sweating at all. One of my sons was asking me a question not too long ago. He said, Daddy, we hear that witches fly. I said, yes. He said, why can't Christians fly? I said they can if they get so connected to the Holy Spirit. We have examples in the Bible in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, from verse 35 to 40. Acts 8, 35 to 40. Find a young man called Philip. He has just baptized the eunuch from Ethiopia. And as they were coming out of the water, the Spirit of God just picked them up. And the next place he landed was several kilometers away. But let us forget that one. If the Almighty God decides to favor you, He can pick you up and thank God I'm looking forward to December. And what will take 10 years to do, it can cost you to achieve it in 10 days. Your capacity to make progress shall be enlarged tonight in Jesus' name. I mean, when we talk about enlargement, like I told you yesterday, the, 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 the simplest definition of enlarge is to make bigger. You can be enlarged by addition. Like somebody, one of my children said, uh, Abraham was enlarged by addition of one son of promise, another son from the bond woman. But there's a greater enlargement that comes by multiplication. And we found in the case of a woman in Genesis chapter 25, uh, verse 21, Genesis 20, 25, verse 21, we'll find a woman who gave birth to a set of twins. That's an enlargement by multiplication. And then later on, we found that the children of Jacob were 12. 
That's a bigger multiplication. And you know, by the time the children of Israel were leaving Egypt, the Bible said the men were more than 600,000 plus children. That is another kind of enlargement. When God decides to cause you to make progress, he can do it so rapidly that you yourself will be amazed. Today, as they keep telling you, the redeemed Christian Church of God is in so many nations of the world, etc., etc. Do you know there are some of these nations that I've never been to? So you cannot say I am the one who went there and started the church. But God, in his infinite wisdom, just will pick somebody here, another one here. One fellow got a problem in his place of work, they sacked him, and he decided to japa. I think that's what you call it. A japa or japa, whichever. And when he landed where he was going, there was, there was no redeemed Christian Church of God there, so he started one. And the church started growing. I don't know how God will enlarge your capacity for progress. But I have good news for somebody. Before the end of this year, you will testify. trying to select what to talk about. Ah, God needs to enlarge your capacity for joy. You say, ah, do I need to have my capacity enlarged for joy? See, if you know the nature of human beings, they have large capacity for sorrow. When it comes to joy, our capacity is limited. I've told you before, if somebody should get up one morning and begin to shout and to praise God and, and then people came in and said, ah, what's going on here? Oh, I'm just thanking God. For what? For my wife's safe delivery. Uh, when? And my wife, you know, my wife delivered safely six months ago. Oh. And you are still shouting about that today. They will say, maybe we should take him to our room. But if a man gets up, and he began to weep and sob. And the people around say, why are you crying? Oh, I'm just remembering my wife who died 10 years ago. They say, oh, well, uh, we understand. Our nature understands sorrow. We have capacity for sorrow. When it comes to joy, we don't take it too kindly. He, the human body can take anything bitter. You put too much sugar in your tea, you will vomit it. Your body will tell you it is too sweet. I don't want it sweet this way. I've told you that is why when the Lord comes and we go to be with him for a thousand years, I mean, with him in the air, we will come back here to spend 1,000 years before we finally go to heaven. Before, because if, we, if he takes us too suddenly to heaven, we won't be able to cope. The joy over there is too great. But the capacity to receive good news 
on a daily basis, my God will give unto you. And there's a way to do that. Psalm 126 verse 5. Psalm 126 verse 5 says, If you sow in tears, you will reap in joy. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6 says, If you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. That means there is a possibility of bountiful joy that God is ready to make available to you. And I've told you before, there is joy, there's great joy, there's exceeding great joy, and there is joy unspeakable. From tonight onward, that thing called joy unspeakable will become your portion. Huh. Okay. This is mine. So I want to say amen and amen to this. The Almighty God said, how high you go is determined by how tall is the one carrying you. He said, I'm taller than the tallest and I will carry you. Let me be specific about certain things that must be enlarged in your life. I have about seven of them written down, but I will just give you three. The Holy Spirit will give you the remainder. Number one, you must enlarge your faith. One of my children mentioned it. Enlarge your faith. And like one of the guest speakers also told you, so that you can please God. But your faith must be enlarged so that there will be no mountain that can stop you. If your faith is enlarged. According to Mark chapter 11, Mark 11, 23 to 24, if there's any mountain at all that wants to block your way, you just command it and it will jump into the sea. But the Bible went further to say in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Mark 9, 23, that if your faith is large enough, there will be absolutely nothing that will be possible for you. Oh, somebody said, sir, the Bible didn't ask us to pray for faith. It says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Absolutely correct. But if you read that story in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, that, I'm, that means where Mark 9, 23 came from, when Jesus Christ said to that man who had a big problem, if you can have faith, all things are possible to him that believes. The man said something. Yes, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. You know what he was saying? If my faith is not big enough, enlarge it. There are some of us here, we've been believing God for one mighty miracle or the other. And it's looking as if our faith is not enough. Tonight, the Almighty God will enlarge your faith. <laughs> Number two, you must enlarge 
your gratitude. Enlarge your faith. Enlarge your gratitude. Enlarge your praise. Because once you learn to praise God, once you learn to be grateful, no enemy will be able to stand before you. None at all. You see, the biggest problem we have as Christians, particularly in the redeemed Christian Church of God, is that we are never grateful enough. I've said it again and again. Because we see so many miracles happening all the time. We are no longer motivated to praise God. A woman came here carrying one baby, share her testimony, uh, when said, uh, let somebody praise, uh, shout hallelujah. Uh, you can hardly hear the hallelujah. Why? We are saying, move out of the way, Joe. We know somebody is coming with four children. Every miracle requires praise. The very fact that you are still breathing requires praise. The, the word of God says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Learn a lesson from Solomon. In 2 Chronicles chapter 1 from verse 6 to 15, 2 Chronicles 1, 6 to 15, when he wanted to show God gratitude, he said, ah, God, hey, thus far you have helped me. Look at me. I am now a king. The Bible said, he offered a thousand burnt offerings. He did what nobody else had ever done before. God said, fine. Son, I've taken note. The second time when he was going to say thank you to God, the Bible tells us in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 5, 2 Chronicles 7, verse 5, the Bible tells us he offered 22,000 cows plus 120 sheep. He enlarged his gratitude. And do you know what happened? The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 14, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 24, that throughout his reign, there was no war. They had peace all around. I have good news for somebody here tonight. Number one, your enemies will leave you alone. For the rest of your life, you will have peace all around. He increased his gratitude. God gave him everything he asked for, wisdom, understanding, long life. And then God saw to it that no enemy disturbed him. We're talking of a time when kings go to war every year. Every king wants to increase his course, so they attacked the nearest kingdom, just to take over small land. In the case of Solomon, they all left him alone. 
Ah. Do you know the Bible says, Thou hast prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy, in the name that's above every other name. From now on, while you are enjoying enlargement, your enemy will just be watching. Enlarge your gratitude. And then enlarge your prayer. Uh, thank you, Father. Father, I thank you. I'm saying amen. And I'm saying amen for you. Because God says there's someone here tonight, he said, from this moment onward, every year, you will have cause to celebrate God's faithfulness. <laughs> Enlarge your prayer. One of my children also said something about that. You see, if you can pray the way God expects you to pray, without ceasing, then God will make you far, far bigger than those who have been mocking you. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, from verse 1 to 20, 1 Samuel chapter 1, from verse 1 to 20, You know the story very well of that lady called Hannah. That they, 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 there were two wives of the same husband, and the other was bringing four children like a rabbit, but Hannah has none. And the, 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 the second wife was giving her horrors. Until one day, this lady decided, I will pray until God hears me. He prayed. I mean, she prayed. And God responded. When she was singing our song, her song of gratitude, in 1 Samuel chapter 2, you can look at it from verse 1 to 10. 1 Samuel 2 from verse 1 to 10, he made it clear that the mockers have been silenced. Or if only you pray sufficiently, your mockers will be silenced. I can go on and on, ask you to enlarge your evangelism, it will enlarge your evangelism. You become larger than unanswered prayers. It will evangelize the way you should. There will never again be an, a prayer in your life that will not be answered. You should enlarge your love. If you enlarge your love, you'll be larger than death. I just give you one passage, you know, or two. But you know, the Bible says in Songs of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6, Songs 8, verse 6, that uh, strong, uh, love is as strong as death. But the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, 36 to 41, Acts 9, 36 to 41, shows clearly that if you really become known for love. Even if death had killed you, death can vomit you. It's the story of a woman called Dorcas. When she was alive, she was showing so much love to everybody. When she died, the people said, no, God, we won't take this. And they sent for Peter. You know the rest of the story. Peter went in, prayed, and brought her back alive. 
Love. The Bible says you should love your neighbor like yourself. You can't love your neighbor and see them living in sin and not witness to them. You can't love your neighbor and know that there's a place like this where they can come and meet with the Holy Spirit and get their problems solved and not invite them. If you show love, because God himself is love, if you expand, if you enlarge your capacity to love, the Almighty God can look down from heaven and change your appointed date with death and cause you to live much longer. Several years ago, one traditional ruler who happens to be one of my spiritual sons said to me when he was sick, I went to pray for him. He said, I believe my time has come. I laughed. He said, sir, Pastor, this is not a joking matter. I'm telling you the truth. I laughed. I said, I know how much love you have for God. And you haven't done the work he wants you to do. He didn't save you for saving you sake. He saved you so you can bring several other traditional rulers to Christ. I said, if God heals you, will you begin to work for him? He said, ah, let him try me. He lived for another 12 years, bringing souls into the kingdom. If you enlarge your love for your neighbor, for your co-workers, for your co-tenants, for the work of God, the work of the kingdom, I can assure you, you won't die. You will live to declare the glory of God. We've been talking about enlargement. And the time here is showing me, I don't know who put this watch there. And they, they know that uh, occasionally we preach as we forget time. In the name that's above every other name, I will pray for you. Because there are several other things that needs to be enlarged in your life. And I believe that God chose this topic because he wants your enlargement to begin from now on. I believe that if you are here tonight and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, he brought you so that he can make you larger than your problem. I thank God for the testimony of the KBC who testified. He said he had been attending the church in about three or four months. And the problem he had been dealing with for more than three years had gone. In the name that's above every other name, those of you who are here tonight, the problems you have been dealing with, I don't know for how long we go tonight. But he said, I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul. That's how he started. The salvation of your soul is going to bring you the beginning of enlargement. It is only the almighty God who can give you the kind of enlargement that the world cannot stop. The kind of enlargement that the world will wonder, how do you do it? So if you are here, and you have not yet given your life to Jesus Christ, come now. Come and surrender your life to him. Let him take over from this moment onward. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, 
is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So I'm going to count from 1 to 10. Before I say 10, make sure you're already standing before the altar. And we will pray for salvation. And then we'll be able to go on with the rest of the program. Let's begin to come forward now as I count. One. Oh, if you come to him and he saves your soul, he will begin to enlarge your coast. Two, he will enlarge your vision. You will begin to see things that you don't even know are there. It will enlarge your capacity to be blessed. So begin to come. Three. Four. And thank you, those of you who are clapping. Your hands will never be empty. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Like you have been told, promotion does not come from the east or west or from the south. God is the only promoter. Come and surrender your life to him. You stay connected to him. He will move you higher and higher. Hurry up. Nine. All right, those of you already in front and those of you on the way, cry to Jesus Christ now. Ask him to have mercy on you. Ask him to save your soul. Ask him to wipe away all your sins. Everything that can stand between you and enlargement, ask the Almighty God to wipe it away with his blood today. And the rest of us, please, let's stretch our hands towards this, our new brothers and sisters, and intercede for them. Pray that the Almighty God will save their souls, even as he has saved your soul. That God will give them genuine salvation, that they will have a brand new beginning from today onward. Please pray for them. And those of you who are still on the way, hurry up now, because I'm about to pray for salvation. Move a little more quickly. Thank you, Father. Yes, he will save your soul. He will be merciful unto you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so, my Father and my God, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your word. And thank you for these people who have come forward to surrender their lives to you. Please, Lord, receive them in Jesus' name. Have mercy on them. Let your blood wash away their sins. Write their names in the book of life. And from now on, when they cry unto you, answer them by fire. And if they ask for enlargement, please enlarge them also. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, those of you who are in front, I rejoice with you. From now on, by the grace of God, I'll be praying for you. Uh, so if you will turn to your left, you will see somebody who is carrying a placard. It will move you to where some pastors are waiting. They will take your name and address, 
and your requests, and then they bring you back to join us. You can begin to go now. God bless you. Begin to go to the left. Now, if you want to, if you want to clap, clap. If you don't want to clap, don't do it. Thank you, Father. We want to pray, and you want to write down your prayer requests. When God told me that he was going to build me a city, uh, it was difficult to believe. When finally he brought me here, showed me two hectares of land, he said, that's the city. In this jungle, the headquarters of highway robbers, heavily invested with pythons and poisonous snakes, I saw a city. I saw some of the things we see now. So your first prayer tonight is, Father, open my eyes to see the invisible. Open my eyes to see the invisible. Let me see where you are taking me. Enlarge my vision. Your second prayer is Lord, enlarge my coast. When I became general overseer, the Redeemed Christian Church of God was in just one corner of Southwest. The first branch we had outside this nation came to pass because a man saw one of my leaflets in Ghana. He read the tract, and God spoke to him and said, that's the man you must follow. So he traveled down from Ghana. I said, please, sir, come. God wants to redeem Christian Church of God in Ghana. I said, ah. <laughs> I'm still trying to cope with even Yoruba land. You're talking of Ghana. We better go and pray again. He says, sir, I'm not going back to pray. I've already brought down my signboard. I've already put the signboard of the redeemed Christian Church of God there. When God decides to enlarge your coast, he can do it without your effort. Prayer point number two, 
Father, please enlarge my coast. Enlarge my coast. Prayer point number three. Cry to God and say, Father, enlarge my capacity to be blessed. Don't let me be afraid of blessing. No. Enlarge my capacity to be blessed. Some of us will be, oh, so happy if we can just get one third hand car who will sing God's praise for a long time. Whereas God wants you to be able to have many luxurious buses that you can use in bringing people to programs. But you are afraid you are afraid of what people will say. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, if you are poor, they will hate you. The Bible says the poor man is hated by his own brethren. If you are rich, they will hate you for being rich. Now, which of the two hatred do you prefer? Cry to God, Father, enlarge my capacity to be blessed. Enlarge my capacity to be blessed so I can be a blessing to thousands. Number four. Someone was asking me not too long ago that way back in 2009, a magazine published a list of 50 people that he called the most influential people in the world. And there were only two men of God included, the Pope and your father in the Lord. So, one fellow was asking me the other day, how did you get in into that list? I said, to tell you the truth, I don't know. Cry to God in your next prayer. God, enlarge my sphere of influence. Enlarge my sphere of influence. Don't let me die a local council chairman. I want to be a blessing to the whole world. Enlarge my area of influence. Number five. Pray that he enlarge my capacity to progress. I want to move fast. I don't just want to walk, not just to run, not just to fly. I want to move at the speed of the Holy Spirit. Please enlarge my capacity to make progress. Number six, pray. Father, enlarge my capacity for joy. 
have had enough of bad news. I don't want sorrow anymore for the rest of my life. I want joy. Joy every day. Good news every day. New testimonies every day. Lord, enlarge my capacity for joy. Well, finally, Father, enlarge my capacity for gratitude. Teach me to be grateful to you, Lord. Enlarge my capacity for gratitude. Anything of your own choice, any other area in your life that you want, then oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell someone, he said, Very soon it will be said of your family that if you have become a band. The, the altar is open. Just come. Cry to him. He's here. He's ready to enlarge you. There's no limit to his enlargement. He's the all sufficient God. Come. And cry unto him. And start by thanking him that you are even here tonight. Give him glory. Show him your appreciation. Cry unto him. Show him that you appreciate him. And then keep on talking to him. Enlarge, ask him to enlarge your vision, to give you the ability to see the invisible to enlarge your course miraculously, to take you to places you can't even dream possible. Ask him to enlarge your ability even to pray.
Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. Let us begin to bring our prayers to a close. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The owner of heaven and earth, we grant your request. The God who is unlimited, we enlarge your course. He will enlarge your vision. It will cause you to see the glory ahead. It will enlarge your capacity to be blessed. It will enlarge your capacity for joy. It will accelerate your promotion. It will enlarge your capacity to pray. It will enlarge your capacity to give thanks. In every area of your life, there will be peace. Your appointment with that is canceled. You will reach the top. the enemies in the world will not be able to stop you. That great desire of your heart, God will grant you. It shall be well with you. He will answer your prayers. And your enlargement will begin now. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Well, let's go ahead and shout a big hallelujah to God. And we can go back to our seats. Thank you, Father. And now, to close, I want to show the Almighty God that our ability to be grateful is already enlarged as we give him our thanksgiving offering with praise.